The leaves are changing. It's cool and crisp up here at Strawberry. Time to go fishing. I'm Adam Eaglin. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, tonight we're going to introduce you to a lady who not only saved my good buddy's life, but she also saved the life of a man I'll bet you know pretty well, especially if you watch the jazz. And uh, we're going to talk about the gift of donation and how it can change lives. We brought a bunch of friends up here to Strawberry. The fishing's pretty good. So this is Penny LaTurner. Penny's a good friend of ours. and. Uh, she donated something to you. I wouldn't be here today without this lady. Uh, she donated a kidney to me a little over a year ago and saved my life. And those who know me are gonna be surprised by this, but I was speechless. How do you say thank you? That seems so insignificant and just uh, inappropriate, but that's all I can say is thank you. We're gonna dive into their story, the why, the how, and everything. But first, let's catch some fish. Let's go do it. Typically this time of year, it's not too hard to catch fish. Cutthroat fishing in the fall on strawberry is a lot of fun. We go out, we throw white tube jigs at them, and generally speaking, it's just about as many fish as you want to put in the boat. Standard fall fishing rig here. White tube jig, gets it two incher, tipped with half a worm. The cuts, all they want is the worm right here, so just the bright jig lets them see it, and they'll come to it, and then they smell the worm, and they'll just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. And... There we go. Fisherman here. Oh, Jack, get a fish. <laughs> the fishing is really good at strawberry. Yeah. Turner got the first fish. I've known Brian LaTurner for 20 plus years. He's probably one of the best mule deer hunters in the state, but believe me when I tell you, he's probably the worst fisherman I've ever been out with. If Brian can catch fish right now, anybody can. <laughs> he's in the boat. He's in the boat. Nice to gun. Greatest fisherman on this boat so far. So, <laughs> there, let me get his fish out for him. <laughs> a lot more than everyone else. <laughs> you guys need some advice on fishing, just let me know. Oh, we got one back here. There we go. Nice. Is that that white or that uh, pearl tube jig? It's a pearl tube jig, yeah, with the little. Oh, there you go, you see in the boat. It still beats not fishing, right? Right. Absolutely. Good looking fish. Poker fish. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Nice net job. Yeah, he's a good little fish. He uh, he put up a fight. Solid too. He's got some shoulders on him. Today we were kind of throwing a mainly just one thing, but there's a plethora of things here that, that people can use in the fall to catch fish. Yeah, this, this is one of the things, this gets it in kind of this pearl color and an eighth house jig head is a great fall staple, especially if you don't want to troll or you don't want to fish from the bank or whatever. Even this fish from the bank is good, but if you're out in a boat, to jig for them is really a great way to fish for them. A little chunk of night crawler. Absolutely, just, just slide it up into the body and let it stick out about an inch or a half inch or so. Uh, that way you don't go through night crawlers quite so fast, but they really like that. Yeah, and we're not right next to the shore. No. We're 100 yards off the shore and 30 feet 30 of water. 30 feet, yeah, 30 feet of water. They, and they're all over this place. I mean, this place is just teeming with fish. Yeah. We'll see what we've got. It's definitely fighting better. Oh, yeah, better fish. I got you, Brian. I'm good. Yep, I'm good. Yep. Much better. He took it down, too. That was pushing 20. Yeah, he's a good, he's got a nice big, big head on him. Oh, oh, whoa. There we go. Perfect release. There you go. Perfect release. <laughs> big fish. He was a good fish. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it may not be the textbook release, but at least it got the job done. <laughs> You're awfully quiet back there, LaTurner. I got me a fish. He's got one. Hey, Brian, you want to grab Nicely done. Nice. Oh, you're doing great, hon. You know when Brian lost his first wife, Carrie, to cancer, I was really worried about him. Oh, oh, that's so cool. Then he met Penny, who I believe saved my buddy's life in more ways than one. So it was no surprise when I heard Penny had decided to donate a kidney to a total stranger. My dad is the first kidney pancreas transplant recipient west of the Mississippi River. And um, because of somebody else giving 
uh, donating after he had passed, obviously the, the donor did, uh, gave my dad life. My sister called because uh, her husband was thinking about donating to Steve Brown. Um, they were friends from work. And they just asked me a moral question, would I ever donate and I, a kidney? And I said, yeah, right away. And then they said, well, what if it was to a stranger? And I said, yeah, of course. Like, why wouldn't I? Yeah, that was a much better fight. People always say, what I wouldn't give her one more day. And my dad passed away. He passed away in 2014. And just that whole idea, like, what would I not give for just one more day? And if I could give that to somebody else to get even one day, then uh, that's all I could do. Penny went through all of the testing to become a donor. And not only was she a match for Steve, she was a perfect match. Do you want a time? Yeah, okay. but I need to know the, okay. the improved part, so I know this okay, part. Okay, well, yeah. Put him through. Steve Brown's broadcast career spans 50 okay. years. He was the sports director at KTVX during the 90s and has probably called more diverse sporting events than any other in Utah. You probably, though, remember him for his 29 years of work with the Jazz. But for me, it was much earlier. I remember growing up and watching you and Mark and the outdoor shows that you used to do a long time ago. Thanks a lot, Adam. <laughs> I know, I know. It was fun. It was, it was fun. I've always loved the outdoors, and that was one of the hardest things, obviously, to know that I wasn't going to get another chance, or there's no way. And during that period of time, I never got out. Steve has dealt with type 2 diabetes for 30 years of his life, but it was in 2020 when his health took a turn for the worse. My kidney function was at a six. Now, 13 is supposed to be end stage. I had probably seven or eight to 10 mini strokes that year on dialysis. There are some people who've been on dialysis for 10, 12 years. I can't imagine that. So again, I want to put the plug in, please. If you're thinking of donating, do. And if, you, and if you're a donor, looking for a donor, please don't give up. It's, it's crazy. But it would have killed me if I'd had to stay on dialysis. She literally saved my life. She gave me much more than a day. Um, she saved my life, and, uh, and there's no way to adequately say thank you. That's nice fish. Steve isn't 100%, but since the surgery, a little over a year ago, he's feeling much better. He's back out fishing with his buddy every week, <laughs> and he now has a new friend, a new family, the Laturners from Farmington. But I really appreciate Brian. I do appreciate the family, though. I've got to tell you that. And because it isn't just an individual situation, support from the family is huge. And I'll tell people who are out there, don't give up. There are so many people who need transplants. But I'll tell you one thing. There are some pennies out there, too. And you will never hear from me this phrase, oh, it's only a penny. Because that doesn't have any, any meaning to me anymore, believe me. It's on. Pretty sure he swallowed the whole thing. <laughs> I hadn't even started reeling it yet. Oh, that might be a rainbow. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, it's a good one. Nice rainbow. That's a pretty fish. You got him right in the lip. Right where yes. you're supposed to get him. That's a keeper if you want yes, to keep him. Please. My friends, Travis and Brandon, were fishing right next to us, catching as many fish as we were and not just on pearl tube jigs. Besides the pearl, which we have real good success on in the fall, this JB Special, color 136, kind of with the red flake and a smoke tail, that's real popular. Yeah. Um, Brandon, in fact, uh, switched over to that and started out fishing me, so it was, it was pretty popular. Um, another thing um, we like to do is, during lunchtime, or if we just want a break, we'll troll or cast um, just some Apollas, um, rainbow trout colored, black and silver, seem to work really well at strawberry especially. Um, casting a pointer 78, a lucky craft in a, in a rainbow trout color, you can tell it's been uh, a lot of teeth marks in it. And as far as rods, I think a medium is what people should have. They've got, I mean, the cuts have a pretty hard mouth. The cuts do, and, and fishing a medium light, uh, you just won't hook as many fish. You get a lot of strikes and it's hard to hook them. So going a medium, I like a six pound test, even an eight pound test line. Um, obviously, the lighter the line, the further you can cast, but I don't want to get some of these slot busters and you don't want to yeah, be stuck with break them off. Light, real light lines. So. Fall fishing at the Berry. It's a little earlier, um, but I think it's just getting going. It's going to get better and better all the way until ice up. I think I might have this one hooked. Nice. He's got one. Hey, he's got one on. Big net? Yeah, that's a big fat rainbow. Oh, is it? Oh, it is. Yeah. 
Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, another tip for you, especially when you're fishing uh, with night crawlers like we are here today, is you know you always buy this Skyberfoam night crawler box, and uh, you pull your night crawlers off, and you get all this black dirt all over your uh, boat. I hate that; it drives me crazy. So I went and bought it's a flambeau bait container. What I love about it is in the bottom. You can put ice here in the bottom to keep your night crawlers uh, keep them fresh. And then I rinse them off at home so that uh, when you go to grab one, you're not getting dirt all over your boat. It's kind of slick, and uh, if you're like me, I'm kind of a clean freak when it comes to my boat. Uh, it sure helps uh, cleaning up the boat after a good day of fishing. It makes it a lot more enjoyable. Oh my gosh, that's another rainbow. Holy crud. Want to keep that one? Yeah. Okay. It's nice about strawberries. you still got a chance to come up and catch some of these rainbows. We've caught a few, and there it goes. But it's a few that you can take home, throw in the Camp Chef smoker. They're gonna be really good. Pretty excited. Well, you got a young, vibrant yeah, kidney. How's it performing? It's, it's a superstar kidney. It was performing good then, Absolutely. huh? Absolutely. You took care of it. Of course. <laughs> Did you expect anything any less? No, not. She's hanging out with this health nut, yeah. What a great gift, though. I mean, there's got to be a lot of people that are thinking about this, um, you know, and they're kind of on the fence. Even if they're not going to do it while they're alive, it's a good idea to put it on your license, and when you're gone, you're gone, right? You don't need them. That's right, yeah. Help someone else out. Let them have another day. Yeah. That was it. Have yeah. another day. Yep. Well, here's the many more days. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate it. Good seeing you being healthy, and it looks, it looks good. Her, Thanks, man. Her kidney looks good on you. Yeah, it feels good, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, I'm Adam Eco, KSL Outdoors. Reminding you to get out with your family, your friends. Get up to Strawberry, catch some cutthroat <laughs> outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.